Listeria monocytogenes is the third leading cause of foodborne-related deaths in the U.S. Bernadette and Kate are survivors. I am Bernadette Jacobs. I contracted listeriosis when I was 32 weeks pregnant with my third child from food poisoning. I ate a sandwich. I ate something as simple as a sandwich. My kids had sports practices and we were running in 50 million different directions that night. And we stopped at a sandwich shop. The rest of my family had become sick to their stomachs after we had eaten dinner at a particular place. And we all had similar meals. And so we figure 99% sure that that's where it came from. Because my immune system was depleted and I wasn't in premium health because I was pregnant, it just made me that much sicker than it would have anyone else. And they figured out it was listeria. And they figured out that listeria being a foodborne uh, illness is where it was. They asked me at that point to write down everything I'd eaten for 35 days. The first time I went to see the doctor when I initially was ill with listeria, I was told that I had simply gained too much weight being pregnant. I'd only gained 38 pounds, which being 32 weeks gestation was not that much. Uh, it wasn't my first child, so I knew that, that there was something wrong. There was something just plain wrong. I was short of breath. I couldn't function the way I normally did. Never in a million years did I think it was connected to anything I ate, anything that I contracted. I, I just thought there was something wrong with the pregnancy. When I went to the hospital that Saturday, which was two days after I was at the doctor's office, I initially had been dismissed again. Uh, I went to the emergency room and they thought that I had a sinus infection. They thought that it was just typical pregnancy symptoms. And I kept insisting, no, I'm, there's something wrong. There's something more wrong. A nurse that I knew came into the room. She, um, our kids had gone to preschool together and she recognized me and she said, you know, this isn't you. This, there's something definitely wrong. This isn't you. She took the initiative and within 30 minutes after she called the head of fetal medicine, he was there and insisting on an emergency C-section. It came back that it had turned into bacterial meningitis and it was from listeriosis and it had turned into sepsis in both the baby and myself. And at this point, um, they were just trying to treat both of us and save us both. When Kate was born, they initially knew that there was something wrong with the placenta, the fluids, everything else. And within three days of blood work, which during this time it was just a whirlwind, it was a nightmare with how sick the baby was and critical, and we didn't think she'd live hour to hour. I felt awful. I felt absolutely awful. My baby was dying. They gave us about a 15% chance that she would make it at all. And even if she did, the outlook was grim. She was supposed to be a quadriplegic. She was supposed to never functioned. She was supposed to be brain dead. And uh, luckily, babies are resilient. And she she healed, you know, day by day. It was a very slow process. We spent every day, every night, every waking hour in and out of that hospital, my husband right by my side the whole time. We thought she was getting better. We had gone from thinking that she was going home to having a team of doctors surrounding her telling us she still might not make it. When they figured out she had hydrocephalus, it was because her head started swelling just gradually. And by the time we went to Ann Arbor, her spinal fluid still wasn't normal. They did a Macomb Reservoir in her head at first on the left side of her head. And they would actually do a ventricular tap to it every day, which meant that they would lay her down with a needle and tap that spot in her brain and take out so many cc's of spinal fluid every day to try to get her body to produce new spinal fluid. We don't know that we're not going to end up there next month. I mean, every day is, every day we're lucky to have Kate the way she is. Kate has done leaps and bounds more than we ever thought she would. Uh, we have gone from four days a week of physical therapy where I couldn't work to take her to therapies to adjusting to having her therapies done at our real estate office. So that way she's actually, um, with every realtor, we've joked that it takes the real estate office to raise a baby, not a village. Right now, we just hope that Kate stays as healthy as she is for us right now and that the next surgery is as successful. She didn't walk till she was three and a half because she had no depth perception. They went in through her eyes and operated on her cranial nerves and she got up and walked. And so Kate's had little successes along the way that have made a huge impact for us. At this point, I 
still have issues with my pancreas. I have scar tissue in my lungs from it. I have I have things like that that you would never think of. I mean, I'm 32 years old. I shouldn't have to worry about being able to breathe properly. If you're handling food in a kitchen, if you are preparing a sandwich for somebody, when you're dealing with lunch meats in particular, the temperature of them is so important. The, the temperature that which they must be kept at and the longevity that you keep them is so important. And when they tell you that something has to be thrown out after a certain amount of time, it has to be. It, there's no keeping it longer to you know stop waste in your restaurant. There's no saving a few extra dollars. You can kill someone. You can absolutely make someone so sick from food poisoning that they will die. Who knew that food poisoning could cause it? Who knew? I mean, I had, I had no idea that getting a takeout sandwich could have changed my life. You can protect your customers and prevent foodborne illness by washing hands and food contact surfaces often, not working when you are sick, not touching ready-to-eat food with your bare hands, separating raw meats from other foods, cooking to the correct temperature, cooling food promptly, maintaining food at the proper temperature and time.